All right, let's do this. Pick me today's game. Ooh. Ooh, that's so on the line. Ah, okay, so it's Great Whale Road. Been a, little, been a bit curious about this game. It's one of those games that looks like almost distressingly similar to Banner Saga. Sunburned Games. Auto save, usual stuff. This game looked, uh, odd. Like, it seemed to have, it looked like it had a valid amount of work put into it. I just, it's hard not to be distracted by the fact that it has, like, what looks like the same Banner Saga, like, dialogue system, the same art style, the hand-paintedness, the part where you're on a journey, the part where it's Norse, Norse mythology specifically, and some odd stuff. We'll see how, we'll see how it turns out. This, I think this game's actually been out for a little while now. I don't think I need to change anything in here. Select your culture. The Danes of Ulsfirsted. Franks of Ferna. The Frisians of Duvenburg. Alright. Let's just let's just go with one. Let's go we'll be the Franks of Ferna. The monastery of Ferna lies on the western border of Austraric Austrarica. The Eastern Kingdom of the Franks. A former Roman villa, it encompasses not only fertile farmland, but also large vineyards and a village. Ferna is not a safe haven, though. Thieves can be found plenty on the whale road and on land. I might have been wrong the same mythology earlier, but I think it, I thought I think the game's supposed to be Norse-ish. At least the art that, ad, that advertises the game looks like it might be like Vikings on boats. We'll see. The last remnants of a dead empire dot the landscape of Francia. A Roman statesman wrote the empire, from a kingdom of gold to no one of rust and iron, to one of rust and iron. It, it looks like it would be voiced, but it's not. The Romans ruled this land no longer, but they left behind laws and customs that have reshaped your people. Among them is Christianity, a new religion that follows one they call the Son of Man. King Hlul brought Christianity to the Frankish kingdom more than a century ago, but the conversion from the old ways has been slow and reluctant. I'm afraid to dwell on the pronunciation because the timing, the time limit of the, the dialogue. Your home, the Monastery of Ferna, has seen its share of raids by warriors who clutch relics of Wurdan and Thunar. Not every member of your religious community has learned to wield a, a spear or a sword in self-defense. Oh, nearly every, I think is what I said, whoops. Some would say that this is not your place, but your abbess argues differently. If the violent religions of old are allowed to snuff out this flame, it will never be rekindled. I always rush a bit when, when, I, when I get hit with, uh stuff to read aloud that I know is going to disappear after a certain amount of seconds pass. I'm like, ah, ah, go, go, go. What do we have here? Come on. Year one, Inferna, Rich Vines. The leader of Ferna, you are tending to your normal duties in the monastery when the abbess calls you to hear uh, to her small whitewashed office. She asks about your studies and appears to take a keen interest in your answers. So I'm picking which character I play as. You are Gundram, an, inspire, an aspiring monk and lauded scholar. Your wit is matched only by your sharp temper. Sure, let's go with that. 
Your mother was a nun in this monastery who died giving birth to you. Though your mother broke her vows, the monks took pity on you and raised you as a man of God. You know no other way of life. Now, you await the day when you can take your final vows and officially enter the Brotherhood. The abbess prays your, your scholarship and uh, hints that she has plans for you come summer. The old abbess asks you to be her eyes and ears. She cannot walk the grounds as she used to anymore, and she wants to know which part of the monastery should be the center of the community's efforts this year. So... This is, uh, I assume library represents knowledge, vineyards represent e economy, and fields and orchards re recommend, uh represents our own food resources, basically. Like, local resources versus knowledge and technology versus things that we can trade with others. Let's try trade? The vineyards? Yep, plus silver. Parts of the vineyards are overgrown, and not with the good kind of herbs, but, but weeds. The abbess agrees with you that wine is not only important for the Eucharist, the morale of the community, but also for a source of income. I think it was Eucharist. As you leave the monastery proper, you are hailed from across the square. Wuldudrada waves you over to her side. She must have broken her fast at the gruel monk. The small town uh, tavern outside the monastery. You can smell the tavern's regular fare of onion and smoked eel gruel on her breath. I have not seen you at a weapons practice lately. You can't always hide behind the others and, and me when the Saxons sail down the coast to raid, she says, a reproach in her voice but a slight smile on her face. So I can choose, I'm choosing between food and practice here. Uh, breaking the fast can wait. Let's practice. We'll, we'll, these are difficult names. Wuldutrada leads you to the training yard. There are some others too. You will not be the only one with bruises tonight. Am I gonna get a? Do I get a look at combat, or is this gonna be just like a stat up? We're loading, so I'm guessing combat. Seems to be chugging a bit, huh? You can do it. We believe in you. Up oh, there it goes. Hello. The combat in the Great Well Road is turn-based. Turn your uh, during your turn, you can place humors. Uh, he place humors. How did that come out? Uh, place heroes. Move each hero once. Attack or waylay. Use your war cries and the turn. War cries are these dots, apparently. Round number. Okay. Hmm. These are my war cry points. I have a lot of questions. What's a waylay? Does that just mean don't do anything, or is it like Overwatch? To place your heroes, select them and choose one of the starting positions to place them. Each hero has a round number for one they can be added to the battle. Like Hearthstone almost? Like mana? The hero's loyalty to you defines uh, when you can add them. Weapons have different ranges, requiring you to be within distance. Some weapons have two attack types. You can choose one or the other while attacking. Each attack type has different properties and may inflict side effects. Waylay is an, is an intercept stance that allows you to hit enemies that move near your weapon's range. So it is like an overwatch. Alright. It, it will always use the primary attack type of your weapon, but has a, a minus 25% hit chance penalty. Any hit you take will interrupt the stance. There are three attack types. Slash. This is the more balanced attack type of the three. Weapons that are mainly slash have an averaged uh, damage range and critical chance. Additionally, it has a it gains 20% hit chance against enemies with broken shield. Blunt. If the enemy has any defense points, this attack type will concentrate on breaking them away, removing two defense points instead of just one. Piercing. When this attack type is blocked, it will also deal one damage along with breaking one defense point at the expense of some accuracy. It's going to be a little bit hard to keep that in, all in, in mind at once, but I'm sure if you do a full playthrough, that stuff will get reinforced in your brain at some point. Warcry, effect, and cost. So you, you have an ability you can spend, it does whatever that says here, costs that much. Each hero can use up to three Warcries in battle. 
You start with a full pool of Warcry points to spend on Warcries. You gain extra Warcry points by defeating your enemies. When ending your turn, heroes that have not attacked or assumed a waylay stance will go, will go automatically to their defensive stance. This stance gives your heroes a 100% block chance, and they will block uh, block very attack. Oh no, typo. Typo in the tutorial. Oh no. And they will block every attack as long as they have defense points. The defensive stance also repairs broken shields. To read this tutorial again, other topics going. Yep, help button. Defeat the leader. Okay, so I can add, I can add these guys in turn one, two, three. Okay. Sure. Let's just throw some people in, right? I should review what you guys have. He has a mace and a healer's cloak. It heals defense points when I use it. Otherwise, yeah, just a oh, mace. Hunting sling and old coat. So they have a rank. They have a ranged attack. Hunting spear. Might have a longer distance, but it's a melee weapon. And then coat. Uh, maybe put you in the back. And you around here. How do I access my... I have waylay and attack. Attack waylay. Oh, this is the war cry. Target ally gets plus 15 accuracy for three turns. Plus 10 accuracy on self for three turns. Plus 25 accuracy on one, for one turn on self. Okay. That's expensive too. But your attack range is quite long. Especially for waylay purposes. As expected, your attack range is two, and yours is one. So normal melee attack with normal range. That they have an attack range of two because they're a spear user, and they have an attack range of significantly further because they use a sling. I, I'm just gonna start moving forward. I think. They're hopefully not overwhelmingly covered in like. Nasty spells for me to worry about right now. Let's see how this goes. Spells was the wrong thing to say. I meant to say ranged attacks. None of them look ranged, but she doesn't look particularly ranged either. But I can more overtly see melee weapons in these characters. I'm not sure what that calculation is down there. So broken shield seems to be what happens when you run out of DP. This character has 12 hit points and 3 DP. So you get DP regen from using healer cloak and that, and that fixes broken shield which is an effect you get when you run out of shield. There's a lot of people attacking me right now. I'm going to want to focus fire on this Frankish warrior because he's out of armor. So he's the one I have the best chance of taking out. Which should be this guy right here with the with Mr. Beard. Uh, attack that guy. Go for it. All right, might take an eternity to kill that guy. Ooh, okay. There's some damage. Maybe take a step back. And if I end my turn, he'll go into defensive stance, right? So, exit. There we go, plus three DP. So he's all, he's all refilled, just like that. Meanwhile, the guy that I defeated... The guy that already is, is, is out of DP is still pushing the attack, so he's gonna... I'm gonna be able to do a lot more to him soon. Ow. Another broken shield character. Now two of my characters have broken shield. Ah. We're in trouble here. Four hit points left. You are able to do five last time, weren't you? Two to five damage, 15% crit. Ah. Not the best chance. 
Not the best chance across the board, really. I need more damage than that, hopefully. One to two damage. So you're clearly the high damage character. But you are... You, you can boost your own accuracy. You can boost your own accuracy. You can target only an ally with accuracy. Which is kind of a bummer. Let's give it a shot. Come on. Ow. Oh. This one guy is hard to take down. Maybe I can finish them off with the ranged character? Alright, one guy down. Cool. It's really brutal how they're- it's like this bloodied corpses and destroyed stuff and it's supposed to be like a training exercise. <laughs> Bit much. I'm gonna have you go defensive because you need to- you need regen like desperately, right? Yeah. Plus 5 DP, damn. I'm still trying to interpret a lot of the information and I'm not super clear on how some of it works and I'm still getting kind of confused. Like, when I look at this guy's stuff, it says 1 DP regen, right? Yeah, D DP regen 1. Maybe that means that if I, if I don't use... Uh, maybe you get your full defense if you block. Like, you get your full defense if you if you take defensive stance, but if you don't take defensive stance, maybe you get one DP regen no matter what? Maybe. Because there's, there's DP regen as a stat, but it's just one. Whereas when I block... I mean, when I go defensive, I get way more than one back. 12-2, 12-4, 11 15, 15 oh, uh, oh, right, she's the leader. She's a big problematic danger for me. Let's try to outmaneuver them a little bit. I hope. Give myself some accuracy. There's some damage. I start using this stuff or I'm gonna be in trouble. Whereas you have huge range, so it should be fine. There we go. I'm going for accuracy bonuses because I just need. I think you do a. I think you do. A, you do an individual accuracy check for each of those individual attacks it's doing for me. So when you have higher accuracy, you do more damage overall by a significant margin. I think. But also, I'm kind of losing, so I'm just going to desperately use up my stuff anyway, just to hope for the best to an extent. And that still wasn't enough. I'm a little shocked that focus firing with your whole team is enough to kill people. I forgot to summon my new people. Oh, god damn it. Oh, I'm gonna get comments about that. All right. Yeah, that's my bad. Shit. I forgot to summon new people completely. It's such a weird mechanic that I'm not used to existing in games. So I, I need to adapt to that. Get used to this new mechanic where you can summon characters after the fight's already been going on. Whoops. That makes more sense about why I'm so outnumbered. I was supposed to be summoning these people on the second and third turns. We're on to round four? Shit, yeah. Yeah, that'll take him out. <laughs> Or not. Or I'll miss. And now we're- now we outnumber them. <laughs> yeah. It happens. It's part of the tutorial process and learning curve and everything. You're trying to keep track of all the mechanics of the fight and then you remember, oh right, there's this whole summoning mechanic that I completely am forgetting. You need to defend yourself. I mean, you, I mean, they need to like sit back- sit out and block this time. Because they're in- they're kind of in trouble. If I could use you, that'd be great, because you're at a great distance already. And then the other guys can focus fire. Or you could just miss completely. Cool. Thanks. 
Yeah, the clicking's throwing me off. So attack, click on the character model. I keep trying to click on their square out of clarity, which is a mistake. There we go. Well, that's dramatic. Hey, we got more song stuff, because that happens every time you kill someone. Oh, plus accuracy for an ally. We can wait for that. Or actually, you can use that, right? Oh, they, but they've already used... Okay, they've already used up their war cry. So they can have up to three war cries overall, but the individual war cry gets used up and is gone. All right, good job. Probably should have had him defend himself, honestly. Ow. Let's have you pump up this guy's accuracy, the damage dealer. See what we can do with that. Oh, so Pierce can hurt their health through their shield. That's a difference worth noting. They probably might have mentioned that in the previous screen, but you know, learning curves. That guy's gonna have a bad day. There's an interesting balance in this game where you can wail on someone so hard and tr just try- you, when you're just trying to take out their shield and then they could rest for one turn and kind of bring it back. You're gonna want to sit this one out, I think. There we go. I've got some idea of how to make myself free gen now. A little responsible with that. Did they already? They already took out a shield again, didn't he? I, mean, I only have to defeat Wuldu we'll, uh, we'll Trada, technically. My objective was to kill the leader, so maybe I should be focusing on them. But I mean, I'm this close to taking out this warrior. Let's commit to that, I think. Broken leg. Minus move on a character that can't move. Anyway. <laughs> I'm doing so many one damage attacks and misses. It's like playing some like early D&D &D or something. Uh, crap. Have I lost track of who can move still? Oh, no, I think the, the wood under their feet indicates that. Just, yeah, he's dead, finally. There we go. You should hang out. I think we're gonna go after the leader next. At this point, I outnumbered them, so whoever they attack can just wait can just rest that turn, and whoever they don't attack can hang out. Self-accuracy. You can increase your own accuracy, but instead they should probably rest. They're my most damaged character. Well, so much for that. We tried. Ah. There we go. The appeal of piercing is that I can just skip their armor altogether, but I'm not having that kind of luck. Getting a little finicky with the, uh, I think it's the spacing of the enemies or the hit detection of where you click or something. Or just, it, I, I, it sometimes takes two to three clicks to do what I'm trying to do. 
because I accidentally reselect a different character, or sometimes I click and it doesn't seem to register. You're in a bad time, dude. Did I just have him sh uh, defend himself, uh, hang out and self-defend, but then the end result was still that he... I think he still got, uh, lost his armor again anyway. No particular need for Pierce anymore, so I should just do whatever has the highest hit chance, I think. Which, he's not hitting for crap, apparently. GG. There we go. An actual hit. They're down to six hit points, so you won't be able to kill them anyway. You might as well just rest because of your decreased armor. There you go. They're gonna have trouble catching up with the damage I'm doing. Plus 10 accurate. Oh, right. They just used their first song. Ooh. I'm a little scared. I'm gonna run away. I don't know if he counts as my leader. Oh, he has a crown and everything. I bet that if he dies, then I, then I lose. I need to be more careful. Ah, stop that. Come on, we're almost there. That doesn't bode well. I'm just trying to block them from reaching my leader, because I think that if he loses, I might lose. I wasn't thinking about that. There we go. Flawless victory. Your enemies lie on the ground. Oh, it went off on its own. It's fine. Defeated t five enemies in ten rounds. Oop. That's most of an episode one fight. <laughs> Yearly planning. Yearly planning is where you plan the development and survival of your settlement. Your current resources are shown at the top of the screen. Once summer begins, you will see the first results of your planning. And when you return from your journey, you will see the remaining results. Assign population to plan your production focus. The first three areas provide food for your people. Farming does not produce any food during winter. Only during summer, while hunting and husbandry provide food during the whole year. Sometimes it will be convenient to split your efforts among these three areas, as the winter weather may diminish their returns. Warfare raises your defense against raids, and boosts your hero's evolution. Warfare power accumulated during winter will increase the renown obtained by the heroes that you, will, that you travel with, while the amounts accumulated during summer is how the heroes left at home will gain... is how much the heroes left at home will gain from the total renown obtained. Craftsmanship produces multiple items of different value that are useful for trading. Diplomacy increases the benefits from trading and gives you a better picture of the current year's market and supplies you with goods you can't produce. Tradition increases your people's happiness, making them perform better at their jobs and keeping them healthy and active. The expected results can give you an idea of the outcome of your production planning. The final results may vary depending on how the year treats your people. Producing more than enough food stocks will encourage population growth. Producing less than necessary will cause some to starve and die. Leftovers from one season will carry over the next. On average, one food stock is enough to, to feed five people. During winter, you can also improve your production areas and your ship. Upgrades require trading goods. Your people can produce some uh, some of these items, but most require traveling out and visiting the marketplace along the along the whale road. Upgrading production areas increases their production results and how many people you can assign to them. You can upgrade your ship to make it more seaworthy, and most importantly, increase how many heroes you can take. So, as you guys are probably noticing here, this is a very this is a relatively complicated. Uh, management sim RPG turn-based strategy com combination thing 
and so yeah, it's not not the easiest thing to even try to cover in a in a let's try. But here we go. I mean, non-comprehensive coverage is arguably better than no coverage, or at least that's my that's why I put on the list as opposed to passing it over altogether. Because as time went by, I'm like, I don't. I don't think I'm ever going to get around to this for a full series, but I don't want to ignore it either, because I did have a code for it. So I, I think we're going to cut it out here, but as you can tell, there's, there's, a, there's a lot going on here. Feel free to check it out for yourself, guys. As per usual, this is a code that was provided by the developer or publisher or PR company or whatever. And uh, if you want to check it out for yourself, there's a link in the description to the Steam page. It looks involved. <laughs> well... I'm having a weird moment here. I've been looking into the Great Whale Road because I wanted to show you, I was going to go to guys to the Steam page and show you guys like, you know, the screenshots of the game that are used for the promo artwork and everything because I wanted to show a little bit more since, you know, I can't show everything in, in only half an hour. There's no Steam page for this game as far as I can tell. Like there used to be. So I was going to say like, I'll, I'll link to the Steam page in the description and I'll, I'll give you guys the link that the twit like the like the, I can find like old tweets on on here that are like look the Great Whale Road is on sale guys and stuff like that and like there's a link but when I open that link it takes me to the front page of Steam which is weird it might be gone like clearly this it was on Steam because you can see this stuff like these types of screenshots are here but you can't physically. I, I, the store page doesn't load for this game, which is really odd. I don't know what to make of that. So I may have just done a let's try for a game that uh, is not purchasable. There's what ship combat looks like, I guess, right there. That right there. Hmm. I wonder if something catastrophic happened. I don't know. This is eerie. Well, one way or another, this was the Great Whale Road. Uh, I'll keep the link in the description to where its Steam page is supposed to be, and maybe it'll work tomorrow, and maybe this is a weird fluke. Or maybe this game's gone, and this was a weird half an hour preview of a game that you can't play. I don't know. The web, As far as I can tell, their official website is... Uh, did I lose it? Yeah, this... No, no, that's not it. That's, that's Rock, Paper, Rock Paper Shotgun. They have a website called thegreatwhaleroad.com and it seems to be software and video game development site talking about how experienced they are like we worked on this wait they're a programmer of Tony Hawk Shred Session that's not how you spell Tony Hawk you can't even say it's a language thing because there's no, you can't, his name doesn't change in other languages my Dragoni by Panini. What are these names? Seriously, why is Tony Hawk's name misspelled? I have so many questions. What is this? This is the result you get for looking into the Great Whale Road? God of War, Far Cry 5, Elder Scrolls 5? Great, wait, there's the Great Whale Road. A review of it? There's a review of a game called The Great Whale Road on a website called The Great Whale Road, but it's just nestled in a bunch of other websites and a bunch of other things. The Great Whale Road is a, go is a god game if you have the patience to go with the flow of the story. The game does include village management, combat warriors, weapons, travel, etc., but when you look at the final product, it does not easily excite a regular RPG game player. Is this just like a... That's weird. Is this website does this does this website not have anything to do with the game? But it happens to have a review of the game on its front page where they talk about it not being very good. <laughs> I I honestly, guys, I don't know what this episode has become. I don't even know what. I don't know. Listen, I just get keys in the mail and I'm like, hey, I'll cover these, and then I end up on a weird, weird, weird rabbit hole. Anyway guys. See you next time. Okay, here we go. I should have found this sooner, but the lack of a Steam page made it a little more confusing to find, but there... If you find the Steam news page for this game, 
which you have to find sort of in backdoor ways. There's this. So a heartfelt goodbye. Hi everyone. After many months, after many a month traveling the whale road, it is time to stow away the oars. Our heartfelt thanks go out to our players, beta testers, friends, and everyone who worked in the Great Whale Road. The game, while a labor of love, is certainly not without flaws. This obviously impacted sales and stopped the ideas of any expansions or follow-up titles. We will be stopping sales of the game shortly as we are closing the studio. The game does not have any server-side components, thus will stay playable in your libraries as long as Steam exists, thus for a long time. Enjoy the, great, the many great games out there. 2018 will be great vintage. Thank you, Sunburn Games. Now I have even more questions. Huh. I'm interested in hearing uh, educated opinions in the comments of to think about this kind of stuff. I'm curious why somebody would shut down the page and delist their own game entirely. Like, do they think the game is so low quality that nobody should buy it at all? Or is it a concern of like, if the studio is shut down, who does the money go to? Like, they, they don't want to leave the game just on Steam, and then Valve just soaks up all the money because there's no company to actually get paid anymore. You'd almost think that still, like, some you'd somebody would just leave their bank account open to be like, that. Like that's the guy who gets paid whenever this game gets, gets bought or something. Or, yeah, I don't know. Is there a downside? Like, if you put a game on Steam and it stops selling, is there a reason to take it off Steam? I'm curious what the motivation here could be. It could just be that the game, they may have decided, they may have decided that they thought the game was low quality and they didn't want to have it available anymore and they didn't want to feel responsible for it anymore or something. Maybe. I don't know. I'm totally grasping at straws here, but I guess this is the grand outcome of this. It was, it was earlier this year, so, huh. I believe it's earlier this year. It says March 30th. Yeah, now these things say that they're from 2017, so I think that means it was all from this year. Huh. Well, there it goes. I t turns out I'm playing a game that uh, ceased to exist four months ago. But it's available on Steam, but only if you already own it. What a rare situation. Okay. On some level, it defeats the purpose of doing Let's Tries. On the other hand, it's like almost archival of like I have this weird museum this this almost like a weird museum exhibit of a dead game oh well see you guys next time